Tonight our special guest is iconic country singer Brendan Dugan. Brendan has been blessed with the deepest voice in the business and at the age of 65, it's showing no sign of diminishing. All this makes Brendan a classic baby boomer and especially welcome on The Beat Goes On. Brendan Dugan, welcome to The Beat Goes oh, On. Lovely to see you again, old friend. Gosh, we go back time. a long way. Yeah, we do. Yeah, how many, well, two, 200 years now. Isn't well, it? you know, the last count. We, we look at the, that, that era of music, which was a fantastic era, especially with you guys. Yeah. And, and the funny thing about it, most of them, if you, you haven't passed away, we're, <laughs> we're, we're still doing it. You know what I mean? We're there, right? And that's, that's something really, really incredible. Yeah. You know, that's really, really great. Those were wonderful days, weren't they? I remember the young Brendan Dugan, extremely good looking, a wonderful deep voice. It's got deeper. Sent a shiver through every woman in New Zealand. Did it? Yes. Oh, I should have shown oh. you which one it was. Oh, you didn't hear that? Especially <laughs> 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 those single days. Well, we've both dined out on music, haven't yes, we? Yes, uh, we know, did, and, back um, then. Well, uh, let's, let's look at it. How many people wouldn't know Brendan Dugan? You know, let's walk down the streets of uh, Tauranga or Waikoui. Um, I think if they're over there. Kaui, over, over 35, 40 years of age, yeah, yeah, you, you yeah. battle to find someone under that age. That you do, don't um, you? Yeah. But in Tauranga, being a retirement place, mm. it's yes, it, uh, <laughs> it's, it's quite common. Yeah. Um, the funny thing about it, there for a while, I cut all my hair back and I took my beard, moustache and everything else, and I said to Sandy Moore, I was just, the buckers still recognise me. Yeah, you, know, yeah. so you try to get away from it, some, yeah. and it doesn't happen. And some old little old ladies still think you're 16 because yeah. they saw you when you won new faces. Yeah. And it's it's... It's actually, it's quite nice, you know. You became the soundtrack of their lives. That's yeah. That's great saying, yeah. that, isn't it? The soundtrack of their And they're all all fans, like yeah. you guys had them too. Yes, yes. Yeah. But classic baby boomer, something wonderful is happening for you, Brendan. You're nearly 65, is that correct? I'm 65. Yes. I get wow. the check. When did the pension arrive? February. February. 29th. Well, I'm leap year, remember? <laughs> so I thought I was going to have to wait another three years, but no, it hasn't happened that way. So when you opened your bank account, your hands were shaking, Absolutely. <laughs> that does it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Who do we thank for that wonderful pension? I mean, there's so many people yeah. very grateful yeah, for I'm, it. I, I, th I thought, you know, that they were going to drop it, drop it, uh, put it up to, to 67 or something like yeah. that. I thought, please, hang on, don't, don't give it, then take it away. You know? But a lot of people... Uh, you know, might say something like uh, the pension's not enough, but I'm I'm always amazed at the fact that we even have a pension. You know, it's a, well when you look at when you look at the world and you look at so many people in such desperate straits, the fact that we can, so we do live in a great well, country. Well, no one's retiring we? at 65 anymore no, no, because yeah. it's I suppose the 65 is the 55 now. I don't know. Uh, I, f I feel great, and mm. uh, I've, I'm certainly got no intentions of uh, of retire and to retiring at a, at a point that I'm just going to go and do nothing. Mm. I'd go crazy. Yeah. But in, in two or three years, I would like to buy myself a camper mm. and um, just run off and actually actually see New Zealand. Yeah. All these years, like you did, we yeah. travelled the country from one end to the other, yeah. but we saw nothing. That's true. Let's think about that for a second. You'd arrive in a town, um, you do the show, you're always at the theatre, getting ready yep. for it. Then you're in the motel, the next day you're in the van. On the road again. You know, on the road again. Make a good and song. <laughs> so many different problems that you're sorting out, you know, yep. and, uh, that you didn't even notice Mata Mata going by. No, you Tiara didn't. going by. I think because of those days, when mm. Grey, Grey Bart and I were together, we, we promoted all our show and shows, mm. and we even today the smaller shows, we do our own sound and things. So you are pretty well tied up. Mm. Uh, it's nice when I do a tour around again for someone else. I just turn up, do my sound balance, go back to my motel, come back, do my show, and go to bed. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's easy. Uh, but when you're doing your own thing, it, there's an awful lot of work, you know. And that's one of the reasons why I would like to semi-retire because I just, I just, I'm still on the road all the time. And so. so you said about getting a, say, a motorhome or a yep. camper van and just leisurely taking your time. Doing a few gigs. Yeah. You know, going down that, gosh, I've never been down that road before. Absolutely. What's down there. Just that, do one, yeah. one show yeah. a week to pay yeah. for the pet the fuel. Yeah. Might pay for a bit more, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> still. <laughs> but yeah, no, it'd be nice to do that. It really, really would be. So looking back at that wonderful journey, uh, any highlights that... Uh, Oh, I think the really biggest hi out? I think the biggest highlight was the Grand Ole Opry. Yeah. In in 1985, um, Gray and I did that, and I remember getting a phone call in in uh, Fort Worth, and Fort Worth was at 11, 11, 12 hour drive away, and uh, the storm came in, like you wouldn't believe. So we drove, no through sleep, yeah. all through the storm, and I remember not being hardly. 
uh, able to see the road and, and uh, the lady, her publicist over, over there, Dorothy Hamm, her husband was, was a policeman and he put a, a 38 calibre uh, pistol in the glove box. Just he said, like, I shouldn't do that, but just in case you need it. And I'm going, <laughs> whoa, you know, what are we doing this? We drove through the, through the night, uh, no rehearsal, uh, no nothing, straight in the Grand Ole Opry at uh, about a, two o'clock in the afternoon. And, I think that's one of the biggest buzz because not many mm. New Zealanders, Eddie Lowe's done it, I think, and the old Rusty Greaves, mm. uh, he did it. Um, maybe I might have left a couple out, but not really. Mm. Um, so th they were highlights. Now that is the Mecca, isn't it? Um, you know, Muslim, the Muslim religion, they have mm. a place in Saudi Arabia, yep. and that's the Mecca, but for country oh, country artists, absolutely. the Grand Old Opry. We were watching last mm. night, actually, um, I was visiting Bill Hohepper and his lovely wife Linda, and we sat down and just watched country music all night on, on the big wow. big screen and uh, off the net, and it was just fantastic. Merrill Haggis and the George Jones guys mm. that you know I looked up to and sung and recorded many of their songs over the years, mm. and uh, it was just it was just a, it was beautiful just sitting back and watching. I was actually educating them on some of the on the, <laughs> the finer points. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, uh, country music in New Zealand, the health. If you were a doctor and you were looking at the the health of country music. Give me your diagnosis. One word, strong. Strong. Excellent. It is strong. Yeah. Um, there's lots of young people, uh, you know, d doing things now. Kylie Bell uh, from South Island, uh, Jodie Doreen. Uh, I could just go on and name a lot of these artists, yeah. and a lot of them in Australia now. And a young group called Cooper's Run, husband and wife team who spent a bit of time in America, who, who I've been helping of late. Mm. Of course, our festival we, we did this year was, uh, was the uh, St Stampede Festival, Pukekohe, mm -hmm. uh, which was a huge success in a way. You don't expect to make money on those in the first time up. But I was talking to um, the promoter there yesterday. I put all the New Zealand side of it together, all the New Zealand acts, uh, the Waratahs and all that yeah. this year. Uh, but it sounds like we might be going to do that again. And, and that in itself is something we need to do. It brings a lot of young people into mm. what we do. You know, we, we still do all the clubs and things, but we're still dealing with a lot of those older people. Um, the Johnny Cash thing I've done over the last three years has amazingly brought a lot of younger people. And, and uh, it's, it's, it's just a profile thing. You could say that pop music and, you know, with rap music and yep. uh, shot itself in the foot and yep. it allowed country music to just really change itself a little bit yep. more. And it's sort of slipped in, hasn't it? Yeah, we, we had that, even in America, uh, going back, 10, 15 years ago, and people like George Jones and Merrill Haggard and those guys were struggling because all the new country rock thing was happening. Yeah. Um, but then they start, it's coming back now, and, and, and that, that George Jones, you know, before he died, he, and, and, and Merrill Haggard, those guys were big again. Mm. And I remember George Jones saying something a number of years ago, I'm not dead yet. And I think <laughs> Willie Nelson's has taken the same attitude too now. You know, everyone thinks he expects them to die tomorrow. But well, he said, no, no, not, not yet. Yeah, yeah. Now, country music in New Zealand, television, radio, is it getting its fair shake? No. No. I'm, that's really what I was get, sort of getting at. And why is that, do you think? I don't know. I, I tried to put a show together. I produced a show uh, in Hamilton, um, made a great show, I thought, um, and put it to TV in, in New Zealand and... TV wouldn't yeah, pick it they up. they look at it and say, mm, Yeah, but what they forget... Not our audience or something No, like but the silly part about it, when that country was big in its yeah, day... it was huge. With 30, it was rated number two in New Zealand. The yeah. only thing that beat it was the news. What yeah. does that tell you? We've got, we've got this thing, as, as, and the radio too, they tried to hold the New Zealand co country thing down. You know, hey, let's be fair, look at Keith Urban. Yeah. Kiwi boy from up Whangarei. He was still singing there when he was 17. He came home from Australia and was doing shows up there. You know, hello. Yeah. Take the blinkers off. <laughs> exactly. Well, um, it's frustrating. You should talk to Face TV. I think. I think a, we should do there's that. A, there's a country show in left in Brendan Dugan. Well, there's, there's yeah. a girl called Ali Cook. You know Ali. Yes, very good. Very uh, good. Ali's yeah. working very hard. She's on She's working hard at yep. doing something. Yeah, different. and she's doing good. And, and Ali's done some stuff with us. And I yeah. recorded a song with her uh, not long ago called Western Line, which is done very well in wow. Australia. Yeah, Very we well. had Ellie Cook on the program yes. about three weeks ago. I do a lot of deep stuff, yeah. Western <laughs> line, and we've become good mates, and, yeah. and she's great. And uh, one thing about Ellie is she's great. You don't have to interview her, you just let her go. <laughs> <laughs> she's fantastic. She really, really is. And uh, But she's just a go-getter. Yeah. And uh, it's quite fantastic. You did all the low parts in that, yeah. uh, the chorus. That was wonderful. Great mm. chorus. And um, tell me about that voice. Uh, 
how low can it go? <laughs> about a bottom A on, on yeah. a really good day. Yeah. Um, it all depends. In fact, I, I did that for Ali. I, I, had a, I did a festival for three days and I said, look, let's put it on the end because I know when I've done a festival and I've already worked the voice hard that it just goes way down there, you know, way down deep. And uh, uh, it wouldn't be a problem normally, but it's just, it's like a car engine, your voice. If you're not using it, it starts to deteriorate. it'll deteriorate yeah. and you'll have trouble pitching notes. Um, uh, and I know when I have three weeks off the first show back, it's like, ooh. <laughs> you know, and the next day I'm fine. young boy and you had a high voice because you know things hadn't happened you know, things hadn't happened and then suddenly it was it was it sudden that this voice appeared or was it over a period of no about it six months? was over yeah sort of kind of yeah. and, and I was very because I, I did my first recording when my voice was starting to break yeah at the age of 13 or 14 um, I recorded a single in Christchurch then I made my first album when I was I started recording when I was 14 so that was released at 15 and of course yeah. That took me on to new faces. Yeah. So that's how it happened, really. So what sort of amazement was there? Suddenly this deep voice appeared, didn't it? It just came out of nowhere. Wasn't yeah, sort of kind of. It's, yeah. it's quite funny. Were you really. amazed at it? Yeah, well, I'm even amazed at it more today. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I was doing, I think, in Norfolk Island a few years ago with with a guy called Kevin Bennett. He's a great country, sing, country rock singer out of Australia. And he said, do you mind doing some harmonies for me? And uh, I'm doing this deep harmony underneath him and he stopped the whole show and he says I can't actually say what he really said because he turned around and he says bloody hell he says I can't even think that low <laughs> and I've never forgotten that line I can't even think that yeah, low. and some of the boys in, 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 the, in the motor industry because I love my motor yeah. cars and the panel beating my son's a panel beating mm. and I used to be on a part-time basis they call me deep down deep down <laughs> So it's, it's nice to be different. It really is nice to be different. Oh, what a wonderful career you've made out of Deep Down. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. yeah. no, I've been yeah. very lucky, really. Yeah. I've been very lucky and, you know, uh, with the help of a lot of, a lot, lot of people who keep me going. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah. yeah. Are you re you're even considering getting back into the real estate? You were yeah, real, real estate. estate. Yeah. yeah. I, I was in that years ago. I was in property development, yeah. actually. Uh, like everybody, I sort of half, half sort of probably lost my shirt on that, like yeah. a lot of people did. But yeah. hey, that's life. You have a go at something. Yes, and, exactly. Uh, at the end of the day, as long as you're happy, it doesn't really, really matter. Mm. And I, you know, as I said the last time, the depression thing got me, which I never ever thought would get me. Mm. Uh, but uh, I'm pretty well over that now. But that was. Uh, they call me JK now, <laughs> uh, you know, except I'd never, did, I'd never make an all black. What's the first sign that something's going wrong depression-wise? What's uh, Well, I found it was waking up in the morning and not wanting to get out of bed. Mm. Um, I, I, I didn't and you didn't to, know why? I didn't want yeah. to work in my office. Yeah. Um, my office was a bad place for me. Uh, to me, that was like a dungeon. You know. Yeah. And I still wake up some mornings and go, right, I'm not going near the office, I'm just going to walk away because it's not, it's not going to be a good day. And I say to my yeah. wife, I warn you now, it's, it's not a good day. A good day. <laughs> and so you, ne you now recognise the signs. Absolutely. Yeah. And then once you do that and realise yeah. that you've got a problem, yeah. uh, you know, it's... And what's uh, the cure? Is there a pill? Is there a cure? Yeah, there's a little bit on my head, on a little tiny piece now, yeah. you know. Uh, but it's just it's something in the brain. So without... There have been many brains there, but... So it came upon you without recognising that... Um, it did really, yeah. it did, and, and it mostly took quite a while to wake up mm. to it actually. Um, just just thought I was getting lazy mm. and couldn't be bothered. Yeah, you could say, look, I'm getting older and uh, yeah. I don't feel... Yeah, and I thought, oh, you know, 65's here, soon I'll retire. Well, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when did it first hit you? This, um, four or five years, well, four, four years ago? Yeah. But I, I put a front up, you know, and, yeah. and you know, I'd had a pretty hard few years. Um, being me and then the industry, I wasn't doing that well. Mm. Uh, that can knock you. And I, I, I quite often look at these All Blacks and these guys who've been right up there, yeah. you yeah. know, for so many years, and all of a sudden they're out and they're, mm. they're down. Yeah. And depression gets the, those guys too. Yeah. It, uh, it's a different way of life. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I just didn't really realise, and all of a sudden I started going, "Hang on, this is not right." Yeah. And then I went to the doctor and I explained it to him, and he said, "I think you've got depression." 
and then I got shingles. All the sin comes in with it, you see. And and yeah. and uh, um, what am I talking about this for? <laughs> uh, you know, but you know, it's good to get it out there, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and I, that's yeah. why I think a lot of JK for what he did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if we talk about it, mm. and people might, someone might go home and say, "That's my problem." Yeah, yeah. You know. And, um, so how, and bad, how, how bad was the shingles? Was oh, it? it wasn't good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I remember my father having it. Oh, not nice. So, yeah, it's a terrible thing, isn't yeah. it? Oh, it's, it's terrible. So, and so I, and a, I had to keep singing. It was a double whammy. Oh, yeah. And you kept singing right I had through. to keep singing. I remember yeah. I had to get in the car in Tarawa and drive to, to Wellington. It took me 12 hours to get to Wellington. Wow. Stop, start, stop, start. Mm. And then I had to set the equipment up. And that was like... A big energy thing to do. Yes, it does. And uh, do the show, mm. and pack up, and get slip, and come back the next day. I'll never forget that. And uh, let's go. But you were testing. Show must go on. Somebody up there was yep. testing you. Someone was. They said, "We've given Brendan everything, and now we just want to see uh, if he can take a little bit of um, Absolutely. pressure." Absolutely. That's what they yep. said to themselves. I think you might be and right. And he came through it. Yep. Come through. It. Bit scary. So. <laughs> but that's cool. <laughs> now, what about the next uh, the next ten years? What are we going to see with uh, on, on, from a singing point of view? Singing point of view, on, I want I want to start doing what I want to do. Yeah. Instead of having to go out and work and yeah. sing, um, Gray and I, Bart and I, are doing some things together again, yeah. which is really really cool. Uh, Dennis Marsh and I do quite a bit together, yeah. which and it's it, it, And you still get the same buzz though. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. When I'm on that stage, when you hear that yep. applause, yep. Wow. Yep. It's a great feeling. You know, I just say, gee, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> You're right back to 16 again. <laughs> Absolutely. You know. And yeah. I think it's today. I still get nervous. Yeah, yeah. Well, still get do. nervous, yeah. especially on the big shows. I get very, very nervous. Yeah. Well, I can't and, imagine you yeah. getting nervous because yeah. you just go out and do such a great job. Yeah, no. It's. I, what are you nervous about? I tell you, you told me that. Yeah. Uh, I told you about there was Howard Morrison. Yeah. I've become quite friendly with Howard over the years, and uh, mainly because our yeah. era. Yeah, that was yeah. our era again. And he says to me, we talked about this one day, and he says, the day you stop getting nervous is the day you walk away because yeah. you're getting cocky. Yeah. And my dad always <laughs> said to me, the day you've got to start telling dirty jokes on your show. Yeah, that's the end too. That's the end too. Yeah, yeah. You know. And uh, luckily I haven't done that. <laughs> I've relied on the voice, and I always will, you know. And I rely on my personality. Yeah. I love getting on stage. And Gray and I did a show the other night where we were just, we were just, Sat on a stage with two guitars, and because a lot of us backing tracks these yeah. days, um, to be able to be able to do it, and we just talked about our past, like we're doing yeah. now, and yeah. to the audience, and they absolutely loved it. Yeah. And just and Greg said after the show, he said that worked so so well. You but know. That just to finish because we're running out of time, but that magic combination, Jody, oh, you it still works. And great, my God, it still uh, works. It still works, doesn't it? Still it still works. We're doing wow. some of those coming up. So some of those. Oh yeah, we're doing a few of those. Up. Yeah, uh, that 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 is something very special. But Eddie Eddie Lowe, great. Brendan and Jody yeah. walk on a stage and do those shows. We did some in the South Island the other week. Look, the four of you just could tour for the rest of your lives yep. because the, yep. you'll still get the crowds. You'll see Gray's 75 now. Yeah. I, I've got to remember that sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> He's 10 years older than me. Yeah. He's coming up 75. Eddie, Eddie Lowe's 73, 70 voice, the same. Yeah. Uh, Jody's, I, won't, I can't say ladies' age, but put it this way. I'm still, Don't go there. I'm still the baby. <laughs> <laughs> Brendan... Thanks for coming in today. Yeah, it's lovely to see you yeah, again. Yeah. Always is lovely yeah, to see you. Yeah, we've got to catch up more often. So yeah, we must do that. I know you've been on The Beat Goes On, but it was some time ago, wasn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah. so uh, yeah. it's time over to catch yeah. up. Yeah. We'll see you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.